Um, so, you know, in closing, I just want to say that the effects of all this psychologically and sociologically, they're complex. And they can be contradictory. The, you know, something can feel good on one side and take something from you on the other. For example, it's convenient, right, to be able to coordinate your activities at the last minute, um, but it can be an inconvenience when a plan is changed on you at the last minute and it was something that you really cared about doing. Um, the ability to reach someone really quickly in an emergency is some of the reason why kids get their first phones, but now maybe we're turning everything into an emergency because we're able to reach one another so quickly. You know, on one hand, we can keep in better contact with people, our children, our spouses, you know, that sounds really great, but are we depriving them of needed privacy, of needed time to be together at the same time? You know, that's not really so great. Everybody needs the time not to be found for a little while. And we have a world of entertainment and, you know, fun at our disposal, but we've got spam and viruses and eyes looking over our shoulder the whole time that we're engaging in it an unlimited supply of things to do, you know, but are we becoming unable to handle stillness? People tell me they feel more safe and secure when they've got their cell phones on them. They're more lost than ever if they can't find their phone or if the batteries go dead or they're in an area without signal or service. Um, so you have to assess and handle these dangers and realities. I guess that's my big, you know, thing here. That you don't want to, you don't want to overreact to them, but you don't want to forget about them either. One of the co-founders of MySpace, a guy named Krista Wolf, says, when you grow up, the first thing your parents teach you is to look both ways before you cross the street and to not get into cars with strangers. And it's that way with the internet. Look both ways before you cross the street. Don't get into cars with strangers. My very last point, though, is the most consistent finding about using these technologies. And that is that more people report positive than negative effects. Most people report that they use these technologies to get together face to face, to make dates, to be with people in a more old fashioned, more tribal, uh, pre industrial kind of way. And, and that's something to remember. And, and so we're always going to have portable technologies interacting with people's needs and motivations and producing all these different experiences and effects. It's very tricky. We're always going to need a lot of research into this. This is good because people like me are always going to be employed, and there's a, a lot of there's a lot of um, there's a lot of room in this field for people who are interested in these topics to do research and to do graduate work and to find out you know how is this going to affect us and our children and what can we do to try to help keep keep people safe because I guess that's my ultimate goal just to look at all this stuff you know as comprehensively as possible provide some insight, some context into how we can most effectively guide our children and ourselves through these mighty, mighty fast social changes and just try to live better and more safely and more productively and more enjoyably with these technologies. Thank you. Now we have a few minutes and I would love to hear what part of this may have spoken to you? If you have any questions or comments or any of this res resonates with any of your experiences. I also especially like it when students tell me what I need to be studying in the future about this stuff because it's changing so fast. I learned, how to, I learned that the next thing I need to really be studying, last time I did a talk, was about creeping, people creeping on each other's sites, and that, that was a real concern for people. And you know, that should make sense to you now that you heard what I said because you know, again, people, we want to look. We want to be seen, and so the creeping makes a little bit of sense, but that's like a potential research project. But I mean, really, if there's anything that, uh, that resonates with you, I'd love to hear what it is. In the back, nice and loud, if you can, or is there a is there, microphone coming around? Is there any research on pain management and the use of the internet? Pain management and use of the internet. This is not my area. This is not something I'm particularly um, knowledgeable about. I do know that in terms of just dealing with diseases and in terms of dealing with um, medical issues, it's, people have been mentioning that it's, it's, it's almost a godsend to be able to find other people, to be able to find medical advice. You know, it's, it's one of the things that really has provided the most growth in the area. But in terms of pain management, things like specific technologies, I'm, I'm not particularly knowledgeable about, sorry. Yes. Thank you. 
I'd be fascinated to know whether students think it's a good thing or a bad thing that you put so much of yourself out there and that you absolutely shape aspects of yourself in response to what people are going to think about them. But certainly it's more, much more prominent than it used to be. I mean, this is a way, this is a, you know, it's something, I wonder if it's on your mind when you post things or if it's just not so much that you're thinking about, wow, I'm putting myself out there. But, you know, do you think it's positive to do that? Do you think it's negative? Is it something you consider when you're doing that? Because that's what you're doing. You're, you're letting people know who you are and what you're all about. Yes, in the middle. Actually, my question kind of revolves around that. A lot of people, like on Facebook, uh, lie, basically. They, they <laughs> want everybody to go look and see how popular I am. And how much to the extent where it can almost feel bad sometimes to see all this, right? And it's like, why isn't my life so like amazing? Exactly. Yeah, I know. My question was, in your study, did you see anybody get depressed from seeing how much fun everybody else has had? And uh, were people happier if they lessened their uh, exposure to social network sites like Facebook, uh, you know, MySpace, and the like? It, it does absolutely have a depressive effect. We did find that. And it's a, it's a the best way I would describe it is <clears throat> it's about achieving a balance because it's very difficult now that it's reached a critical mass of Facebook. It's very difficult to opt out in any real significant way, especially your guy's age. But really, increasingly, at any age, to be part of society is to be on Facebook. It's to be on at least some of these kinds of sites. And so it's almost really not an option to opt out too much, but to achieve a balance where you absolutely, um, where you recognize that people are putting forth the more positive aspects of themselves, the more popular aspects of themselves. You know, the good pictures versus the bad pictures. Of course, that's what people are posting, because that's what you're doing, too. So to be aware of that when you're on it and to not let it get to you too much. Um, but it seems somehow to be unrealistic to expect people to do too little of it, because that's the world we're living in now. I think you really you want to stay as you want to stay as alert as you can when you're online. You have to be aware of this being so relaxed because it feels like you're just hanging out. You have to be aware that it, it's going to feel that way. But if you allow yourself to get sucked too into it, there's a very, there's a high risk of depression. There's a high risk also of, of um, fatigue and not wanting to be productive anymore. Not wanting to get out there and, and do some things you need to do because it's simpler just to, you know, throw a few things into the computer. Um, I mean, it's an absolute risk, yeah. And it's something to keep in mind when you're online. First of all, everybody's putting forth their best self or what they think are their best selves. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that's how they are. You know, that's, that, that's the reality. Yes? Uh, um, I want to just uh, push you on just uh, something on what you're talking about. You call it portable communities, and you, you draw this sort of this historical line that we're just doing things that since the dawn of time, humans can sort of impulse and express them in a new way and freedom to do that. And it's made a list of some of these things that are the markers of the portable community that you that you mentioned. Freedom, chatting and shopping, very little required of you. You feel like you belong. Uh, you get rushed, excited, uh, it's convenient because you don't have to disturb anybody. You get in and out of these relationships without uh, more and more easily. This sounds portable, but it doesn't sound to me like pre-modern community. I mean, these, these sound to me like uh, something that I would think would be, that runs against what I think the community, which has to do more with fr friction, with inconvenience. And so I just want to ask you how you, I just, that connection I'm not buying. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I, you can't push it too far. I can't say it's the same as a pre-industrial pre, uh, community or pre-modern community. I can't say that those communities are the same. I guess I would say there are aspects of it which are more communal, aspects of the modern community which are more communal than you might think. So the, the essence of the connection, uh, the fact that the, the largeness and the size of it is, is felt by us somehow, that we feel those around us even if we're not actually in face-to-face -face community. It's still very different and in no way a replacement or substitute for face-to-face -face community, which is why people still go to the malls, to the movies, they still take in-class classes when they could be taking online classes. You know, I don't see necessarily that there will be this wholesale shift away from face-to-face -face interaction because I do think that's still the bedrock of society and always will be. So it's not the same. And, you know, I have to make sure that I draw that distinction well enough. It's not the same. It's different. But there's portions of it that are enough the same that I think it's worth thinking of their communal aspects, considering them communities. 
um, you know, and I, and I flirted with using different word or, you know, like collectives or something, and it, it really seemed to come closest to communities from anything else. And interestingly, that's the word most of my interviewees would use, and I didn't use the word to them. I didn't tell them the name of the book. That actually, that actually came about from their interviews. I didn't know what I was going to find. And um, they would describe them to me as communities, not groups. Um, they would talk about them as relationships, as friends, as caring, as love. I mean, these are the words that were used to me. So that's what I think is similar, but not the same. And certainly their processes, they don't work in the same way. And they, you can't you know, enter and exit them in the same way. And I, I, I think there's many differences. I think the important thing about them now is that they're layered on top of the traditional types of communities and that people just have more communities and they have more interactions and, um, and that they, they fit together kind of interestingly. You know, we were talking at lunch a little bit about how, like I've got teenagers who, when their friends are over, they're hanging out face to face and they're hanging out technologically at the same time. They're texting one another while they're in physical community. They're texting their friends who aren't there. Um, providing kind of like a back channel, kind of like a microblogging thing to their everyday experience. It's all their reality. And soon there will only be humans on the earth who that's all that they know. Well, I'm exaggerating because there are people still who don't have um, internet access. But there are people who are technologically plugged in, will have grown up with this online, offline blurring to the point where it's all just more interaction, more reality. I don't know that they'll even be interested in maybe theorizing it like I do because it will be unremarkable to them. So, and I think they'll think of it as community. That will be their community. Um, so I don't know the extent to which I'm addressing your issue. Do you want to follow back up and no, that's fine. fight I, me a little? Seriously, we have community <laughs> communities, we have all communities, but I, I suggest those are problematic too. In the mm -hmm. sense that, I mean, my definition of community first and foremost is friction. <laughs> but I think, there's, I think that's possibly true. I don't think any, a community is necessarily, you know, we, we assume it's got this positive uh, glow to it. and. I, you know, I, that's why I'm, I'm, I try, and especially if I can, you know, my book, or if I can do a larger talk, I can really talk about the pros and cons of all of this. But I don't think the community is necessarily wonderful. I mean, there's a lot of harm that's done to one another in communities, and so it's it's more about the it's more about the fact of the um, and the essence of this of this group than to say that it's a good or positive necessarily group. I, I'd argue there's plenty of friction either way. Thanks, it's a great question. Yes? I was wondering what you think about the next step of virtual reality and um, second life. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's, it's more new ways to connect. It's more new ways to form communities that will continue to be layered in and added in to complicate, to draw people in different directions. And I, I still, my, my thinking is that it won't replace you know, physical reality. It will just add more dimensions to it. And again, I think it becomes indistinguishable to someone who, if that's what they do all the time, just becomes a part of the reality. To even think of it as virtual versus other kinds of reality. It's just all reality. That's how I think it will be and is seen. And will continue to be more seen. Anyone else? Yes. Not too long ago, about University of Stanford, they were trying to isolate uh, how or what made certain people better at multitasking than others. And you mentioned that employers were perhaps going to be looking for people who can do those kinds of things or can do multiple things at the same time. Mm -hmm. But the results of study were that people couldn't do anything very well. Yeah, multitasking actually doesn't really work. Right, so I was curious, you had mentioned that this is a skill. I'm kind of thinking. Yeah, no, I think there's a lot of problems, and the, the one that, made, that I mentioned is you know, the ability to disconnect and focus on one thing at a time is, is diminishing, and that's a problem, obviously. But I think, you know, just sort of to go along with the reality that that's how people are living, I think there will, there will still be more of it. There will be more attempts to do it, more expectations that to some extent you can at least have this window open and talk to that person and be kind of texting someone on the side. The things that our students and our children can do really well, it'll just become more of a fabric of society. And there will be those losses. There will absolutely be those losses in depth. And hopefully there will be research and realization that it's 
you know, you can't push it too far, that you need to balance. You can do a little bit more, and if you do too much, you're going to harm the project or whatever. But um, in terms of a world in which more of that is expected, I, I think it's happening, for better or worse. But we do need, you know, this is what, we do need all this research. We need it desperately. It's changing so fast. I see a lot of traffic in and out, so maybe this is a good time to wrap up. Say thank you again. I really appreciate your attention. Thank you.